Okay, as promised, I made you go look and see, do I have a cortisol problem? Am I seeing basic signs of adrenal fatigue, excess cortisol production that might be getting tired out by now? Increase in body temperature, spontaneous sweating, heat flushes, mind that races and races, won't stop, tired through the day, wound up at night not sleeping well, cranky, grumpy, not actually going and picking up a sword and shield like our ancestors did, but doing battle on email, in the office, at home, in social settings. At least what our subconscious mind determines to be battle. And that's the trick. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today, is the role of the nervous system, the subconscious mind. In the fight or flight response, even though in our logical opinion, we're not in danger. There's no reason to be stressed. There's no reason to feel threatened or vulnerable. Our logical mind might think that, but our subconscious mind might be triggered by something. Our subconscious mind might have a different opinion of things and it's our subconscious mind. It's our subconscious mind that's in charge of our cortisol production. It's in charge of what happens in our adrenals, which then affects the rest of our hormones, including thyroid, testosterone, estrogen and progesterone, melatonin, circadian rhythm, thymus, gland stuff that's your that's that's a bit of immune system coming in to play yes yes what else blood sugar ah <gasps> blood sugar is part of our endocrine system it's connected to cortisol stress oh god how stay tuned i'll tell you all about what cortisol does to increase our blood sugar and over time increase our risk of type 2 diabetes but not for today stay tuned today today we're gonna look at the autonomic nervous system stay with me I'm gonna say that again the subconscious mind and in those terms I mean autonomic nervous system the rest of the body all the things that regulate on its own right because we don't have to logically think about oh keep my heart beating it's not like we have to walk around and go, I need to keep my heart beating today. Nope, the subconscious mind keeps our heart beating so we can focus on the email we're writing or on the big piece of equipment we're driving. The autonomic nervous system. And if the clinicians and the scientists were as smart as they think they are, they would have just called it the automatic nervous system, but no, it had to be a fancy term. Auto, so the automatic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, okay? It regulates our heartbeat. Uh, it keeps us breathing. So like, yes, I know we kind of hold our breath when we're concentrating a lot. A little sign that you're stressed. What do we do when we're stressed? What do we do when we're alarmed by something? <gasps> we hold our breath. Oh, there's another one. As we're looking and we're and our eyes are like, oh God, this email. Okay, how am I gonna, how am I gonna, handle this how am I gonna manage this oh there's okay there's something in my way here what am I gonna do with my piece of equipment how do I how do I steer around this uh, I gotta make sure that I do this I don't want to hurt that person there's somebody over here how do I get through this and your eyes are wide and you're holding your breath in a relaxed state we breathe better but our autonomic nervous system our automatic nervous system is in charge of a lot of different things including whether or not we produce cortisol or whether or not we produce happy hormones. They're kind of opposites. So the more cortisol we produce, the less we are able to produce our happy hormones. What are those? Serotonin and dopamine and oxytocin. Oxytocin happens when we get a hug from somebody or pet our animal or make love. Okay, so cortisol. Stress hormones or happy hormones? The body has to make a decision. Where am I? And the autonomic nervous system, not the logical mind, but the subconscious mind, has to kind of go, okay, let me assess this. Is my human on a battlefield right now or is my human in a really cozy, comfortable, thriving situation where I can just chill? Because if the body 
believes that there's a need to produce cortisol, it'll produce cortisol, sacrificing its production of happy hormones in the process. So the more cortisol we produce, the less happy hormones we have, okay? That's how the nervous system comes into play. The nervous system makes a decision whether or not to produce cortisol out of all our energy and nutrients, or whether or not to produce serotonin and dopamine and oxytocin, or healthy testosterone, or estrogen and progesterone in the right balance so our periods don't get all clotty or whatever. So I'm gonna tell you my story because I learned the nervous system's role in cortisol production the hard way because when I was young, I was a firecracker. I still am. I'm just a more tired firecracker now. <laughs> okay, but, but a lot of things wound me up back then because I had a lot of energy and I had a lot of energy that I had to get out of me, which is why I did a lot of jogging and skiing and exercising and I was a quite the little athlete. So, and that, so performance became definitely a thing for me, okay? And so I just put out, 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 and cortisol and I'd wind myself up and the adrenaline would come and the cortisol felt really good, by the way. Put myself in battle mode all the time. Go for like a 40 minute run, sprint at the end. Seven days a week, six, if I was taking it easy. It's not healthy, it's called overtraining. I was pushing, pushing, pushing myself into warrior mode to get my day done successfully and in a protective, safe way, at least according to my subconscious mind. And I was putting myself into warrior mode, into battle mode, to offload all of that stress and to blow off steam from that experience of life. So I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing my cortisol and my adrenaline, which does feel good, but it's got nothing on serotonin and dopamine and oxytocin. They're way better. They feel way better. So what happened to me? Well, I burned out. I burned out. All right? 41 years old. You can see the age on my face. It's not so bad. I took pretty good care of myself. I educated myself. But what I learned in the process of that is that if you push warrior mode and battle mode enough, you'll start to get muscle pain or tension headaches. The body will eventually put you down. It'll stop you because it can only handle so much. Cortisol takes a lot of energy to produce. And it feels good. It's a high. It's a high. And so we can become addicted to stress. And we've, we've talked about that in, in previous videos. Addiction to stress, where we are type A personality, where we are very performance oriented, where we're very success oriented, we're very goal oriented. And every time we reach a goal, we get a little shot of gratification. That pushes, that, pu that pushes this way, pushes over here, pushes the pushes the endocrine system into the adrenals. And over time you get adrenal fatigue. I've had adrenal fatigue for years. I, I have had adrenal fatigue since 2005. And arguably before that, because I had overtrained, which is another form of adrenal fatigue, which you'll find in sports literature, overtraining syndrome. I overtrained in 2000 and, well, 19, 1999, I, I, had, I had been in overtraining. So I know a little bit about adrenal fatigue and the role that our subconscious mind plays and how our mind will get through life in whatever way it can and how we as humans are so tenacious. We're stubborn. We'll find a way, we'll figure it out, and we'll get it done. And that's the role of the adrenals, making sure that we get it done, that we power through, that no matter what, we got this, because we're tenacious. There is a cost. And now that I've trained my nervous system to produce happy hormones instead of cortisol. And I've now got that wisdom 
that I can bring to the table in my practice to help others train their own nervous systems. Out of a state of chronic cortisol production leading to adrenal fatigue and all those symptoms, to help them make their way out of that. Over this way, towards serotonin and dopamine and oxytocin. That's actually possible. It takes a long time to get over here to adrenal fatigue and it takes a long time to get back but what I notice with my patients with the supplements and the diet changes and the lifestyle changes and the rest and the restorative yoga and the Tai Chi and all the other wonderful things that we do to get us from over here in adrenal fatigue to like over here in adrenal fatigue and then we get stuck then we get stuck about here and we just can't make it back and tilt those scales over to the left to serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. And that's where my nervous system training comes in. That's where I operate. Yes, I can help you from here to here. That's easy, I've been doing that for years, okay? The last little bit. If you're stuck right there, let me help you get over. It's not easy, but it is simple. Give me a call if you think I can help.